Once again, thank you for joining me on the Waters and Stanton video channel. If you're new to this channel, then you're very welcome. And so don't forget to press the subscribe button so that you keep in touch with upcoming videos. This video is really about the doublet antenna. Now I have covered the doublet antenna before, but I wanted really to cover the practicalities of the doublet antenna and uh, what you might consider when you're going to install a doublet. Now first of all, what is a doublet? Well, a doublet really is a dipole. Um, in uh, ham radio terms, a doublet normally refers to a dipole which is fed with open wire feeder. Now the advantage of open wire feeder is there's very little loss on it, so you're going to worry about the length, and it's a very flexible antenna. Now, in the good old days, we used to have open wire feeder which was what the term suggests it was wire which has had spacers well those days have really gone now there is a, a, a more up-to-date version which is which is what we call ladder line a ladder line is basically two parallel wires that are separated by uh, an insulated material and there's apertures cut in it to reduce the interaction so it's a very lightweight line it's much lighter than coax cable so the advantage is very very low loss you haven't got to worry about the length you haven't got to worry about the loss and the weight is somewhat lighter than coax cable so the strain on the horizontal antenna when you feed it is far less than it would be with coax cable there are unfortunately some disadvantages but there's a lot of advantages and we're going to look at the doublet antenna um, how you might build one and what you can and what you can't do Let's deal with a very fundamental and practical decision is how do you connect your 450 ohm ladder line to the horizontal element? Well, let me show you the way that I do it. One way of connecting your 450 ohm ladder line to the antenna is to use a standard insulator. It's probably the cheapest way of doing it. You can see here that I've got the um, bit of ladder line going up into the insulator and uh, coming out to the top. Let me just uh, zoom in a bit on the camera and I hope you can see it. Right, um, so I've got the ladder line going through. You can see the bare ends of the ladder line either side. And then the grey wire represents the, um, the element, the wire elements of the antenna. What I do is bare those wires um, and then tie wrap them in a couple of places, solder them and then put some insulation around and that produces a, a very secure uh, method of attaching ladder line. There are other ways of doing it but it's, the, it's probably the, one of the cheapest ways of doing it. 450 ohm ladder line as I've said before is the way to go for um, a doublet antenna. We sell 450 ohm ladder line by the meter. It's not expensive and as I say it's very lightweight. Now as regards antenna wire, what should you use? Well basically any, an, any wire that's capable of conducting electric current is okay for antennas. We used to use something called hard drawn copper wire and I used it for a while believing that it was the best thing. But it's not very easy to work with and frankly there's no real advantage. I these days prefer to use plastic coated wire because the plastic coating protects the antenna it doesn't sort of degrade copper does tend to degrade uh, over time and uh, normal sort of uh, plastic uh, copper wire multi-strand I tend to use it's easy to work with um, is fine for the average antenna in the average garden if you want something that's really tough but yet very very light use Kevlar antenna wire again it's something that we stock Kevlar antenna wire um, it's so tough that uh, you're not going to break it under any normal circumstances you can pull it really tight without in any risk so Kevlar is fine that's that's coated as well so it's weather protected so don't worry too much about antenna wire provided that it conducts the electric current is not too heavy that's fine you know one of the advantages of a doublet is that the length of the radiating element is not particularly critical basically as long as the antenna is a half wave long 
it will work on that frequency and it will work generally speaking on frequencies above that so if you have an antenna wire that is what 40 meters long therefore it's a half wave on 80 meters that antenna will work on the 80 meter band the 60 meter band the 40 meter band and all the other bands up to uh, 10 meters and if you're lucky even on six meters that's one of the advantages of a doublet it works on any frequency from the baseband now i said that a 40 meter antenna a long 40 meter long antenna will work on 80 meters it actually will work on a lower frequency so for, for example you put up a 20 meter length of wire that would be a half wave on 40 meters but you'll probably find that it will also resonate on 60 meters you can go a bit lower on a doublet before you find that you just can't match it. So basically a doublet is a very flexible antenna. Now why did I say it's not critical in length? Well, because it's not. It doesn't have to be a resonant length because the doublet antenna is an antenna that connects to an open wire feeder and the whole antenna, including the feeder, is the bit you have to match. So you don't have to actually worry about the length of the antenna. It doesn't have to be a half wave or 40 meters, it can be a bit longer, it can be a bit shorter, because the matching doesn't take place at the antenna feed point in the air, it takes place at the feed point at the end of your ladder line. So whatever match you might get at the center of the antenna is totally irrelevant. What is important is matching the antenna at the feed point. So your doublet is a very flexible antenna. Put up 40 me uh, 20 meters of wire, you'll cover the 40 meter band and you'll cover all the other bands up to 10 meters, courtesy of the antenna matching unit. And with a bit of luck, you'll also cover a slightly lower band, say for example, 60 meters. So that's why I say that the doublet is a very flexible antenna. One practical aspect, however, of changing the length of the radiating element is that it changes the radiation pattern. So if you have a half wave dipole, in other words, you have 20 meters of wire resonant on the 40 meter band, then it acts as a dipole and the radiation pattern will be likewise that of a dipole. So if you do change the length, then that will actually change the radiation pattern. And if you want to see what the patterns are, you can go onto one of these um, software uh, antenna design programs and you can see how the radiation pattern changes but that's the only practical reason for wanting a particular length is to adjust it for a particular radiation pattern. We'll come back to feeding the antenna a bit later on but having, dis having told you that the length is not important it's also the feed point is not important. It doesn't have to be at the center of the antenna. Now, very often in a, a typical sort of suburban garden, feeding the antenna in the center is, or you might think it's the ideal way of doing it, but in fact, it would be nice if you didn't feed it in the center. You move the feed point one end or the other. Now, there's no problem with that. You can do that with a doublet. You can feed the antenna in the center. You can feed it a third of the way along. You can even actually feed at the end. Now there's something called um, a, an end-fed ZEP. And if you go into the textbooks, you'll find that it uses open wire feeder and it feeds it right at the end. But basically, for normal purposes, you can feed the antenna in, in the centre or you can feed it further along. Because the matching takes place at the antenna feed point, which is down by, in the shack by the antenna matching unit, and you don't have to worry what happens in the feed point on the actual driven element. So if you want to feed it halfway along or feed it a third of the way along, if that suits you, fine. Likewise, you can use it as an inverted V. It doesn't have to be horizontal. You can use it as an inverted V. That works very well as, as well. Some of you may say, well, wait a minute. If you use ladder line, you've got to keep ladder line away from metal. And if I have an inverted V, I'm going to have a metal mast supporting it and the ladder line will be right against it. Well, the answer is you don't have to have it that way. What you can do is you move your antenna about a metre over to the right or the left so that the apex is no longer at the feed point. The apex is either to the right or the left by about a metre. That then means to say that your ladder line 
can hang down about a metre away from the metal mast and at that distance there is no problem. Alternatively of course you can move the feed point so you can have the apex at the centre of the dipole but you actually have the feed point move to one side so one leg is slightly longer than the other. In other words one is a bit longer and one's a bit shorter. You've moved the feed point offset. You've offset it a bit and then you can actually put the physical centre of the radiating element at the centre of the uh, at the top of the um, support mast, in other words, uh, the, the apex. Two options, two ways of getting around it, but it works either way. Right, here's an example um, of a setup which I used a little while ago. You can see the support mast, and uh, you can see that about a metre, or probably about two metres, from uh, the support mast is the ladder line. And I'm not quite sure whether you can see it on the uh, photograph, but uh, it's effectively inverted V and the other leg comes down to the left of the mast but I'm not quite sure whether it will show up in this photograph but I think you can see uh, see the idea. It's a good idea to take the ladder line back to the radio room as far as you can because remember there's almost no loss on that and uh, you see here I've taken mine along the edge of a fence just tacked it on the uh, fence. When it comes to feeding the antenna at the transceiver end then we need to think about it. There are two basic ways of doing it. You can get yourself an external uh, antenna tuner unit and use the balance terminals. Most modern uh, antenna matching or antenna tuning units have a balanced output and that means to say you bring your balance line into the radio room, uh, you connect it to the balanced uh, uh, terminals on the back of the uh, matching unit and you're, you're ready to go. All you need to do is then adjust it for the band you're on and remember that uh, generally speaking you can operate any band from base band upwards. So if you've got this 40 meter length of wire, uh, 80 meters upwards, uh, if you've got 20 meters length of, 20 length of wire then it's 40 meters upwards and all the bits in between and you can also squeeze it down a bit lower um, you can, generally speaking, resonate it a bit lower than the, the sort of fundamental half-wave band. The other way is to, and this is the way that I use and the way a lot of stations uh, do it, is you get yourself a ballon. Now I tend to use a 4 to 1 ballon because I've got one. Let me, I, I'll show you this 4 to 1 ballon here. This is, the one I, this is the one I've used. Take a look at this. This is my somewhat battered W9INN four to one ballon which is manufactured by MFJ and I've used this for many years it's been outside although the case itself is not uh, really waterproof it survived let me just take the uh, the top of the case you can have a look as you can see despite being outside for quite a few years it's pretty clean inside it's it's, um, I think the uh, the winding is actually enclosed, I can't really show you it, but uh, if you are uh, just inside there, the winding is, is uh, enclosed. So it survived and I think it'll handle the full power, certainly handle full full legal power. It's just an example really of if you, uh, certain items in ham radio, you buy them, it's a sort of an investment really, you're never going to change it, it's not going to get out of date and uh, if it's reasonably made it's uh, going to survive the course. and. This has survived the course. And I then have a short length of coax cable going from that ballon into the radio room. It's no more than about three metres long. Uh, there can be a fairly high VSWR on that bit of coax cable on some bands. It really doesn't matter because the loss even at a high VSWR on that short length of coax cable is neither here nor there. So the easy way of doing it for very 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 often for many very many uh, operators is to sort of drill a hole in the wall um, a short length of coax cable uh, going from the ballon which is just outside the window and into the back of the transceiver now that will work on some bands but generally speaking it's not the total solution what you really want you really need an external antenna tuner because an external antenna tuner has a much greater um, tuning range, not tuning range, but impedance matching range. 
So I would suggest that you purchase yourself an external antenna matching unit because it's a good investment, They're not really fashionable things. Buy yourself a decent one, it'll last you for I want to say a lifetime, it probably will last a lifetime. And uh, it'll uh, work uh, on all sorts of different antenna systems that you care to put up in the future. I'm using one of the LDG automatic ATUs and that does the job for me. There's no balanced output on it but uh, I'm feeding a ballon just outside of the window here and uh, that works fine for me. You then take the kayak's cable from that goes through the wall into the back of that antenna matching unit. It doesn't need to have balanced terminals because you've now got an unbalanced line coming in from outside but as I say most matching units have got the option anyway. So take that kayak's cable into the matching unit, adjust it again as before uh, for minimum VSWR and you'll be able to operate on all the bands from that base halfway band upwards. That's the two options. You can either bring the balance line in onto an antenna matching unit or you can convert to coax just outside the window and come in onto a matching unit. You may be lucky on the odd band where the transceiver has got enough ability in the internal ATU to match so you could bring the coax cable into the radio room and take it straight into the back of the transceiver if you've got an internal ATU. Now I did that with my old K3, my old K3, which I've still got actually, and that has an amazing internal antenna matching unit, and that worked on all bands, but a lot of the modern radios, the antenna matching ability is not as good as an external matching unit. And that really is the practicalities of installing a doublet antenna. I've used them on and off over the years, had uh, great fun, and they say they're, they're so versatile, they're not really fussy. The only little bit you have to um, engineer is when you bring the, uh, the, the balance line into the radio room, how are you going to do it? But it's not, it's not super difficult to do. And uh, you have the joy then of operating on any band you like um, from that sort of lowest band upwards. It's a nice antenna, very docile and I've had a lot of fun. So if you're thinking of putting a doublet up, I hope I've given you a few pointers. As I say, I enjoy using them. It's not the only antenna I use, but I've enjoyed using them and it may well be the antenna for you. And of course, don't forget, you can use it as an inverted V and you don't have to feed it in the centre. No matter what anybody else tells you, you don't need to feed it in the centre. The length of the antenna, if it's a half wave, you can feed it anywhere you like along that half wave point. And that may help you in your particular garden. So thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been useful. I hope it's given you a few pointers. And as we shoot this video, we're in the middle of the summer now, or the middle of the year anyway. I think summer's started. Uh, hopefully it doesn't finish. Gracious me, not too early anyway. So anyway, go out in the garden when it's not raining. Try this out and I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun. Thank you for supporting this channel. Don't forget to press the subscribe button. Much appreciated all your support. And enjoy your home radio, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.